I'm glad to be here this morning. I'm glad to be here with you. And we we'll ask if you would please stand once again as we read that scripture that was read earlier in your hearing from 2 Peter chapter 1. And I'm going to start at verse 5 this time, just for time's sake. Uh, in chapter 3, uh, verses 3 through 5, it says that God will give you everything you need to live right. And then in verse 5, reading from the International Version, it says, Because of that, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Here's the important part. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, that means more and more, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. And I'd like to use for a topic this morning. Keep coming back. Amen. Keep coming back. Y'all say that with me. Keep coming back. Let us pray. Eternal, most wise God, we just thank you for this hour, and I, I thank you for this message, oh God, that's as much to me as anyone. Help us right now to be receptive to what the Spirit has to say. Help me to bring this message in a way that will be practical and easy to understand, something that we can all apply to our lives when we leave here this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I was just thinking this week, um, meditating and praying about what the message would be, and I started thinking about recovery slogans, things that we learn, that we say again and again. They have a purpose, and that's why we say them again and again. Like, one day at a time. We've heard that in our recovery, just one day at a time. And the purpose of that is we just can't get everything we want all at once. Change takes time. So when we get into recovery, just one day at a time. We also say, take it easy. Amen? Take it easy. Give yourself a break. And that, the purpose of that is to help us to be reminded, peace. Don't stress. Stress is not good for recovery. Peace is good for recovery. Stress is not good for recovery. So take it easy. Give yourself a break. How about just for today? We hear that just for today, and that means that we need to stay in the present. We can't do anything about yesterday. That's over with. We can't change it, can we, Brother Michael? Can't change yesterday. Just for today. I can do something about this day. Tomorrow's not here yet. Can't do anything about that either. So just for today, Brother Jack, means be right here in the present moment. Let's try to stay focused in what's going on right now. Progress, not perfection. What about that one? That just means that recovery is a journey. And as Rev says, holiness takes time. We don't get it all at once. And so don't beat yourself up for not being perfect. Amen? Anybody that song that Brother James sang earlier, if I falter, if I fall, I mean, God's not mad at us. God's not pointing a condemning finger at us. Progress, not perfection. It doesn't happen all at once and we're, we can't be perfect so don't beat yourself up for being perfect but one of the sayings that i like one of the recovery slogans that i like the best is keep coming back keep coming back y'all say that with me one more time keep coming back keep coming back and keep coming back has several purposes one when the newcomer gets to the rooms and picking up the white chip, just starting over, or just beginning for the first time, it encourages them. Keep coming back. Don't let this be the last time we see you. Keep coming back. Don't feel like, you know, you can't come back after today. If you go away and you're ashamed, oh, I can't believe I did that. Keep coming back. It encourages the newcomer. It also encourages the old-timer. People are getting tired, you know, feeling frustrated. You know, have you ever heard the old-timer talk in a meeting? You know, I just, I hit a wall in my recovery. I don't think I can handle this. Some of us have fallen down and feel like, what did I do all that for? How could I have been clean all that time? And then fell down. But keep coming back. You know, be encouraged. That's the thing I get out. Be encouraged. Also, sometimes we use keep coming back if someone's like acting a fool, talking, you know, out of the side of their neck, talking junk. And you're like, well, 
Just keep coming back. One day you'll get it. You know, you didn't get it yet, but one day you'll get it. So sometimes we say it in a, you know, a little bit of a sarcastic way, like, well, just keep coming back. One day you'll see. But many of us are not there yet, so we shouldn't point a finger. If we say it to somebody like that, well, you know, just keep coming back. One day you'll get it. We're not there yet either, amen? None of us are. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's on a journey. And so if you say that, in jazz, well, just keep coming back. Just remember to say that to your own self in the mirror, too, because we're not all that in the bag of chips either. And so when we think about that, keep coming back. Keep coming back. I remember that we learned in recovery that really, if we really want to recover, we have to have two things, a spiritual awakening and a total psychic change. Amen? You have to have a spiritual awakening and a complete change about the way you think and look at life, the way you make decisions, a total psychic change. So a spiritual awakening and a total psychic change. And so we have to keep coming back because you can never get it all. And that's what this scripture is saying right here. This is Peter writing. Of course, he was one of the disciples. He was one of the ones that walked with Jesus. And now I'm going to tell my brother Jack, to keep coming back because I can't believe he answered the phone in church. Y'all say, keep coming back. Keep coming back. Really? Very you be glad. <laughs> it better be Jesus because I'm telling you, if that was Rebel standing here, it wouldn't be nice. I I'm a lot easier than Rebel. Y'all say, don't do that. Oh, we don't answer the phone in church. No. Very keep coming cool. back. Keep coming back till you get it. Okay, that's good. So, what the scripture says is that God has given us everything that we need to live right. He's given us everything that we need. And since He has done that, then we need to keep coming back and keep getting what He's got for us so that we might continue to grow and learn. We've got to keep coming back. We don't get it just because we came to the altar and gave our life to the Lord. We don't get it all at once because we work the third step where it says, I came to believe in a power greater than I am that can restore me to sanity. Coming to believe, giving your life over to God, those things, that's not all. It's a step. Amen? It's a step in the right direction, but it's not all. You've got to keep coming back to get everything that God has for us because this word says that God has everything we need, but we can't get it all at once. We have to get it in stages, and that will go on as long as we live. And, it's, and it says here that if you want to have an effective and productive relationship with God through Jesus, you've got to grow. You can't just be stagnant. You can't just stall out in your recovery. And I know that some of us may have had that experience where we were growing and changing, and then all of a sudden we just stalled out. You know, we just felt like, I'm arrived, you know, I've got everything there is to get, I'm good now, and we stopped growing. And it, that word says when you stop growing, that's when your relationship with God becomes ineffective, it stops working for you, and it becomes unproductive. Things, the blessings that would come, you don't come. Like nothing's happening. You're standing in the desert with sand blowing in your face. It just feels like dry. You know, where is God? And, you know, what happened? Why am I not feeling like I'm making any progress? It's because we stop growing. Amen? So you got to keep coming back. And so I give you that this morning, that this, the recovery slogan of keep coming back applies to the church just like it applies to the rooms. you got to keep coming back. You gotta keep coming back and study. You gotta keep coming back in fellowship. You gotta keep coming back in prayer. You gotta keep coming back and being uh, willing to serve. Keep coming back. Don't just think because you did one thing that that's all that God needed and that that was enough. Keep coming back, and God will find something else for you to do. God will continue to provide opportunities and ways for you to serve and ways for you to grow. I certainly can say that in my life. And so if we keep coming back, which I hope you will, and I hope you'll take that with you this morning, that I need to keep coming back to God. I need to keep coming back to the things of God so that I can have all that God has prepared for me. Because it says here He's got everything you need. And I do believe that. God has everything we need. It's just a matter of us trying to get it. Amen? we got to get it. It might be there, but if we don't get it, 
then we can't use it. It doesn't mean anything to us. And it says this, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. First of all, because you first got to believe. You've got to believe that God exists. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm saying in order to walk this walk and to have a spiritual awakening and a total psychic change, that third step says, I came to believe in a power greater than I am that can store me, restore me to sanity. I can't believe there was a power greater than I am. And I believe that there's a power greater than I am. And I call that power God. And I know that power through a relationship with Jesus who makes God personal for me. Jesus is like God's representative to me. If I wanted to know who God was, then I go through Jesus and I understand God. And I get a connection with God through Jesus. And so I believe. And do you believe? Do you believe? Do you have faith? You can't see it. You know, but you can see where God has been. We can't see God directly, but we can see where God has been. We can't see God, you know, like right here in a tangible way, but I can certainly see what God is doing in the lives of His people. And so faith comes first. Do we believe in a power greater than we are? Do we believe in God? Do we believe in God through a relationship with Jesus Christ? That's good. That's the first step. That, but keep coming back. Because that's not enough to just believe. Amen? It says if you believe, add to your belief, add to your faith, goodness. And what goodness means is add to that the desire to live right. I want to live right. I want to take the high road. I don't want to, you know, be a low life. You know, I don't want to give back evil for evil. I don't want to be, you know, like the lowest common denominator of humanity. I want to be a better person. I want to be morally excellent. And that's a pretty high calling. But once you believe that there's a power greater than you are, God, through a relationship with Jesus, so that that's how it works for me and a lot of us here, then it ought to change your heart. If, you're, if you keep coming back, your heart ought to change and say, you know, I want to live right. I want to be a better person. I want to be a good person. I want to be morally excellent. I want to take the high road. That's the kind of life I want. So add to your faith, goodness. And if you get there, if you've got goodness and you say, I want to be a better person. I want to take the high road. I want to live right. Keep coming back. That's not enough to believe and then to want to live right. That's not enough. Keep coming back. It says if you've got goodness, then add to that knowledge. What does that mean? It means that you need to be a learner. You need to be a student of life. You need to be interested in things. You need to be looking around at the creation and learning about what God made. Look around at people and learn about what they're doing. Learn about different kind of careers. Learn about different kinds of fields like biology and science and, and uh, philosophy, the ideas. Learn. Brother Jack, you're learning a lot of stuff. You're going to school right now, right? You're learning how to use a computer. You're learning how to read better, right? You're learning about all the different things that go on in this community. I love the program that you're in because you're learning a lot. They don't just sit you down and feed you lunch and give you a snack and bring you home. You're learning every day, aren't you? That's knowledge. So when we learn, we'll be asking more questions. Once I learn something, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Well, now that I know that, now I'm wondering about this. You learn about that. Wow, I didn't know that. Now that I know that, let me find out about this. So knowledge, it says that once you decide to live right, then be a student of life. Learn. Try to see what's going on in this world. Read books. Listen to music. Do anything that you can to get new ideas in your head. Amen? New ideas in our head. An open mind can take in some new ideas. A closed mind that's already made up, you got your mind made up about everything already, nothing new can get in there. So be a student of life. So believe and have faith in that power greater than you are called God and through Jesus Christ. Want to live right. I've got a changed heart. I want to be a better person. I want to learn about life. I want to know things that I don't know now. I want to be open to new ideas and new information. But that's not enough. You've got to keep coming back. That's what this word said. That's not enough. Keep coming back because once you've got knowledge, it says this, to knowledge, then you add self-control. Somebody say that with me. Self-control. Let's say it again. Self-control. Because see, by the time you believe, 
in a power greater than you are, God, Jesus Christ, and you want to be a better person, then you become a student of life. And you're like, wow, all of a sudden I, I understand so much more than I ever did. And I have a lot of questions that I never had before. And it makes me look at myself and it makes me think about the things I'm doing. And it makes me think about how do I decide what I'm going to do or what I'm not going to do. And you get some self-control because now you know more. Before you do something, you look at your options. Now, I'm getting ready to do something. I'm getting ready to say something. I'm getting ready to go somewhere. And i got to think about it before I do. What are the possible risks and benefits? What are my options? What's going to happen if I do this? What's going to happen if I say this? That's self-control. You think first before you act. Amen? You think first and you consult God. Which is the right move for me? What's the right decision? You don't just do anything. You don't just act on impulse. You don't just say anything you want to say. You don't just do anything you feel like doing right that minute just based on your emotions. Impulsive and then later going, God, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. I can't, you know. And you try to take the words and put them back in your mouth. Don't work like that, does it? Try to act like I never did that. It just is hard to unring a bell. As Rev said. So self-control. Once you know more, then you want to be able to think first before you move. Think before you act. Think before you talk. And take everything that you've learned. What is the most godly thing to do or say right now? Self-control. And you might think, well, self-control. If i got self-control, I'm good. If i got self-control, that's all I need you got to keep coming back. Amen? That's not enough. This word says you got to keep coming back. Self-control is not enough. Once you have self-control, it said to add to that perseverance. And what is that? Well, I've got self-control now. I don't just say or do anything. I think about it first before I do it. That will save you a world of trouble, my brothers and sisters, if you'll just think before you move. If you'll think before you talk, if you will get some self-control in your life, it will save you so much heartache and pain in life and frustration. But yet, then you've got to learn how to persevere, which means you've got to learn how to hang in there. Amen? I got some self-control today, but everything's not coming like I thought it would. Not coming as fast as I thought it would. Things are happening I never anticipated. Like right now, whoever's cleaning out that fellowship hall, and carry those dead turkey carcasses out, you know, that mess that's in there, they got to persevere. They got to hang in there because they might feel like, how long is this going to take? Is this going to take all day? You got to hang in there. How long is it going to take for me to get a job? You got to hang in there. Brother Anthony, how long is it going to be before you can get that peer support specialist training that's just right for you? You got to hang in there. Don't give up. Before the blessing, before the miracle happens, you got to learn how to hang in there and wait. Hang in there and deal with frustration. Hang in there and deal with, you know, some disappointment and, and maybe some, you know, confusion because I'm just not sure. You've got to hang in there. And a lot of that has to do with patience. Hanging in there, just, just waiting on God to lead you and guide you, waiting for something to come. Perseverance. And so we believe we want to be a better person and we learn and we take in new information and new ideas and we, we we're able to think first before we think or before we act or before we talk and then we're able to hang in there when things are tough and you might think well if I've got self control and if I can hang in there I'm good that's all I need I'll be alright keep coming back that's what this word said that's not enough it's not enough you have to continue to grow you have to continue to add on the layers of spiritual uh, advancement it's talking about here. It says if you, if you learn how to hang in there, then you got to add godliness. And godliness means I really don't want to intentionally sin. Amen? I would like to live a holy life. I would like to live a life that's pleasing to God and in His will. And so that just means that when you get up in the morning, and you know, now I'm, I'm talking to real people right now, sometimes we know something's wrong, and we do it anyway. Because we just figure, well, it's not that wrong. It's not that bad. I'll say I'm sorry later if it, ha you know, if it comes to that. I'll clean it up later. I just, I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. But that's not godly. 
Godly is, I really don't want to sin intentionally. If I know that this thing I'm about to do is wrong, that it's a sin that's really not pleasing to God or His will, I don't want to do it. You know, I want to be, I want to live holy. I want to live in a way that's pleasing to God and His will. So you add godliness. And you might think, well, if I'm trying to live holy after all that, I'm good. God will be pleased with me. God will bless me. That, that should be my recovery, right? To put a period at the end of that. But no. you got to keep coming back. It's not enough. That's not, this word said, that's not enough. That once you add godliness to your spiritual character, then you have to add brotherly kindness. And this is like a roadmap for you guys. If later, if you want to study the scripture, how am I going to be able to grow up like Christ? Just look at this, like a plan. You know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to add that, then I'm going to add that, then I'm going to add that, I'm going to keep coming back, because I, got, I can't get it all at once, and God's got everything I need, but I've got to get it. And after we add godliness, then we add brotherly kindness. And that means that we ought to be not just thinking about ourselves, amen? Don't just think about ourselves if we're really going to have the best relationship, one that works for us and produces the blessings that God has for us, we got to be thinking about other people too. Amen. Brotherly kindness, which means being helpful, trying to help people. Yeah. When we see someone in need, we try to help them. We try to do something that's kind. We go out of our way. Random acts of kindness. Amen? Ever heard of that? Has anybody ever heard, 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 um, heard about people paying it forward at the fast food restaurant? I didn't really know about that. But there are people today are doing random act of kindness that when they're in the line at a fast food restaurant or at a restaurant and there's somebody behind them in line or somebody at the other table, they'll pay for theirs and I'll pay for theirs too. I'll pay for mine and I'll pay for the person behind me. So the person behind you drives up they say, yours is already paid for. The person in front of you paid for. You don't even know who they are. And so then it's upon that person that they would pass it on. Random acts of kindness. Pass it on. Brotherly kindness. Well, if I'm that kind of a person, if I'm good to my fellow man and I'm kind and helpful, what else could there be? Certainly that must be my recovery. That must be where I can put a pew. Nope. Got to keep coming back. Y'all say that with me. Keep coming back. It's not enough. When you have brotherly kindness, it says then, if you have brotherly kindness, the last thing that it suggests that you have here is love. And love is a big category. To add love to your spiritual character. You've got to keep coming back. You've got to sit with God. You've got to pray. You've got to be with God's people. You know, you've got to be used by God and serve. It's a big, it's a big calling, but it's worth it, my brothers and sisters, in the long run. When we're drawing our last breath, none of us are going to say, Boy, I'm sure glad I got that 52-inch flat screen. That was great. We're going to be saying, I wish I'd spent more time with the ones I love. I wish I'd shown more love to people that feel unloved. I wish I'd made more of a difference in life. And it says this, if you're going to get love, then love is patient. This is what you need to get. Keep coming back until you're patient. Love is kind. Keep coming back until you're really kind and helpful. It doesn't envy. Keep coming back until you're not jealous of other people. He doesn't boast. Keep coming back until you stop trying to step on your brother's neck to get somewhere. Brag on yourself and put them down. Keep coming back. It says it's not rude. It's not self-seeking. Keep coming back until you're not selfish and self-centered anymore. Keep coming back until you says it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered. Keep coming back till you can hold your temper and not pop off at people and cuss them out. Not sit in church on Sunday and cuss somebody out on Monday. Amen? Keep coming back till you're not easily angered. Keeps no record of wrongs. Keep coming back until you learn how to take your own inventory. Amen? Not take everybody else's inventory. This is a list of things that we want to work on. And it says if you can do this, that love won't deny, delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always 
perseveres. So that's the message this morning, my brothers and sisters, is that we just need to keep coming back and keep getting what God has for us. That word says He's got everything we need to have an effective relationship with Him, which means that it works for us. If my relationship with God works for me, it helps me. Amen? It's there for me in the midnight hour. It's there for me. Anytime I need God, it works. It helps me. If you want to have an effective relationship, you got to keep coming back and add those things. you got to be growing. And then you've got to, it says, and the, the most important is if you possess these qualities in increasing measure. Y'all say that with me. Increasing measure. That means more and more. That you never get enough of any of those things. That you're always able to get more and more of all of those things. If you're on a path to get more and more, even if it's a baby step, even if it's just a tiny bit more, that is the way it is usually. We're just getting a little bit more of each of those things all the time if we're growing. If we have those things in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. And I would put that another way. If you have all these things, keep coming back and, get, and keep working on getting more and more of the things we just listed, you will have an effective which it will work for you. And productive, it will bring blessings into your life, relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us stand.